Okay, so I've been playing around with large language models on the Raspberry Pi 5. This is the 16 gig model and I'm using the official Raspberry Pi AI hat. And uh, I'll show you a bit about it, but I'll also show how to install it because it's actually super easy to install locally on your machine so you don't even need to use the internet. Now it's worth mentioning at this point that the AI kit isn't needed for this and in fact it doesn't even use it. So the AI kit that I've got, which uses the Halo 8, is uh, designed for image applications. And they've said in this post, I mean this was a while back, but I haven't found anything more recent that mentions it. So at this stage the AI hat doesn't look like it's supported. When you start up Alama, which is the program that runs the large language models, it actually tells you no AMD or Nvidia chip detected, so it's going to use the CPU for the AI tasks. So let's show you how it works. So if I launch it, so Alama run DeepSeek dash R1 7B. Now I've got my RAM on the side here. Let's also get HTOP so I can get it a bit bigger. And with HTOP, you can change it. If I press F2 meters, and then if I do the memory bar and press space to change it, we can get a nice big 15.8 gig of RAM and I'm using 5.41 at the moment. Let's pop that out of the way here. So all you do is just type. So it's a bit like Google Assistant or Alexa or Siri or anything like that, but the difference is if I unplug my ethernet cable, so if we look down the bottom here, this will show that we have no internet in a second. There you go, so it's got no internet. So if I now go back to the web browser for BBC Sport, you can see I have no internet. So everything is happening offline and I've downloaded a large language model which is 4.7 gigabytes. So effectively it's got 4.7 gigabytes of information that it can then use deep learning with to try and give you an answer to your question. And you can be pretty random with the question. So one of the first things I asked, what is the heaviest metal? And what it will do is it will think about it. It will use that huge database, well, 4.7 gigabytes worth of database that I've put on there. And it goes through, and, and this is DeepSeek that it's using, which uses kind of reasoning. It, it kind of goes back and forth and comes up with an answer. It doesn't just come up straight away with an answer. And as you can see, it's coming up with an answer. So as of now, the heaviest known element is organoson, which has an atomic number of 118 and, and goes on to explain it. And if I show this bit in real time, so this is how fast it's typing it out. So it is slow. Uh, but when you look at the RAM usage, so we're only still using 5.4 gigahertz. And I thought the 16 gig RAM Pi was going to use more. But then when I think about it logically, the data that I've downloaded that it's basically using to work everything out is only 4.7 gigabytes. So if it puts all of that into RAM, then we've still got loads of space left. And what's weird is that it came up with a completely different answer yesterday, a much longer answer in the way it was reasoning and things like that. But what I'm going to do is put in, I meant music. And you can see, all right, so I need to figure out what the heaviest metal is. But this time it's related to music. So the thing that people are really pleased about being able to run locally is that nobody else has access to your data. So you're running it independently on your machine, you've downloaded the large language model and it's pulling from that. Whereas if you're using the phone app, it's generally using the internet. So all of your questions, all of the answers and everything are all being saved. So I'll read a bit more of it. From what I know, heavy metal is a genre of rock music that emerged in the late 70s and it influenced many other genres since then. It's known for its fast tempos, loud instruments, and often violent or dark themes. But wait, when someone asks about the heaviest metal, they're probably not just asking about any heavy metal band or song. They might be referring to something more specific. It's just, it's really clever, the way that it works. I'll let it run, because if you're into heavy metal, then you might want to know what it says so you can disagree with it, and then I get more comments. Heavy metal is characterized by things like thick guitars, deep bass lines, powerful drumming, and intense vocals. And then it says, alternatively, maybe the user is referring to the most physically demanding live performances or studio recording sessions. And while it's running this, 
you can see the CPU usage is super high. So 100% CPU, you could probably hear my fan is running. Uh, I could take the AI hat off, which would give it a bit better cooling because it's not using the AI hat. But again, still using 5.4 gig. But if you try and launch something else, it just goes incredibly slow because it's using all of its resources on this. But then if you're asking it a question and you can ask, I asked it some questions about Python programming yesterday. It just gave me loads of information. I did try it, I couldn't get it to work, but I'm not into Python programming and it probably needed some tweaks to get it to work. But there was loads of interesting things that it pulled up and ideas and things like that. And obviously if you have the larger language model, it will be much, much slower. The reason I've gone for this 4.7 gig one is because people are saying that it works fine on the Pi. But the one I first tried to download was 404 gigabytes. And it does go through all sorts of things here. Another angle could be musical elements themselves, like the heaviest parts of a song. If we're talking about heaviest, maybe it's referring to something else entirely within the music context, perhaps the heaviest use of effects in heavy metal tracks or the most intense emotional content. I also recall that heavy can sometimes refer to the weight of an instrument itself, like a double-headed bass guitar. But honestly, I'm not entirely sure what the user is looking for. They mentioned both metal and heaviest, but clarified it's about music. It might help if they provide more context or clarify their definition of heavy in this musical sense. And it's starting to come up with some names here, Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth, often noted for their powerful riffs and drumming. So anyway, it goes on and on. I'm gonna hit Control C to stop that uh, and just ask it some other random question. So if I say, what is the lightest bicycle? Because I'm thinking if it's only got 4.7 gig, what do they, choose to have in there? How does it have the information configured that it can access it? And you'll see that brands come up and all sorts of things. There you go. So it talks about different types of bikes, mountain bikes, road bikes, hybrids. Yeah, that makes sense. Like a racing bike or a specialized type of bike designed for minimal weight and still only 5.4 gig used of memory. So this would be the same performance on the 8 gig Raspberry Pi 5. They talk about dirt bikes, but yeah, dirt bikes wouldn't come into that. So this is the reasoning that it does. So it goes through all the information that it has and somehow takes its time to reason and try and work out your answer. And all this information is only as recent as when it was last compiled. So I had a thing where I asked Google's Gemini, which is their online AI system, about what was the first iPhone with a USB-C connection. And it gave me the wrong answer and it proceeded to keep giving me the wrong answer. It came up with an answer very quickly and sounded very concise, but it was completely wrong. It's taking so long to do this. Obviously, it'd be quicker on a, on a faster computer. I understand that. There you go. In summary, the lightest bicycles in the market are usually racing specific models. So it doesn't really give me an answer. Uh, it doesn't get anything concise. What are lithium batteries made of? So you can see it's going through the same sort of thing. So I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to do make a Python program to show CPU temperature as a flame on a candle. I don't know what it'll do with this, but let's give it a go. And the thing is, if you've got this running on your Pi and it's not your main computer, you can be carrying on with your work, but you've asked it a question. Yes, it takes time for it to come back with it, but you are gonna get an answer that you can just copy and paste. So I'll come back when it's finished doing that, because I think this is probably gonna take a while. But again, remember, we have no internet connected at the moment. This is just doing it all locally on the machine. So I should also add some visual elements like candle flames and a wick jumping to make it more realistic. Using MC codes for these effects will help achieve that look without needing actual image libraries. So the clever thing about this as well is that it's just giving you ideas. So if you are into coding and you know Python, then it will come up with some things that you can use. It might not be the, the end product, but it could be something you could use. It even puts in the hash and an explanation of what it's doing. So function to simulate flame effect on candle. And while it's doing all this, the fan is running, but if you see, if I touch the processor on the AI hat, it's not even hot uh, because it's not using it at all. So it's finished and it's typed all this in. So it looks like it starts here and that's just a note at the end. This program is purely for demonstration purposes and doesn't actually measure real CPU temperatures. To make it more accurate, we need to use an actual temperature sensor. So it's not going to actually work, but is it going to show anything? So let's open Gini and paste that in and then just run it and see what it does. No, okay. 
So because I don't do coding, I wouldn't know where to start on that. But the fact that it's put all this in and given ideas of how to do it has to be pretty impressive. So let's show you how to install it. I'm gonna shut this down and I'm gonna boot up on an eight gig Raspberry Pi 5 with an NVMe drive on it. So I have a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS and I've got some text here just to show me what I've done. So alarm a deep seek. So update, I think I've updated it already. But let's do that first. Let's open a terminal with Control Alt T and pop that in. Or oh, it does need a little update. And uh, to install Alarma, so that's the program that allows you to use these large language models. So let's copy that and paste that in. And it does make it very easy. So we can see the warning here, no NVIDIA or AMD GPU detected. Alarma will run in CPU only mode. So if we want to check what version of Alarma we've got, we can just copy this in and it will tell us. So 0.5.7. So if you want to download a, a sort of database that it runs from, you can see here DeepSeek V3 is 404 gigabytes. So whereas we weren't struggling with RAM before, Obviously that's going to use loads more RAM, it won't just max out the RAM to try and improve performance. But uh, we're going to install this one, the one I was using just now. So let's copy that and paste it in. And you can see that it started to download and we'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so that's all finished now. And if you're not interested in DeepSeek, then if you go onto the GitHub for Olama and scroll down, there's a load of different models you can run. So you install in the same way and then just run whichever one you want. And there's actually a list of what they are. So we do alarma.com forward slash library. So DeepSeek R1, first generation of reasoning models with comparable performance to OpenAI. And then we've got Llama 3.3, 5.4, PHI 4 from Microsoft. Mistral, Gwen, Gemma, all sorts of things with a description. So to run this one, you need to put this in but not V3, we need to change that to R1 colon 7B. And you can see that's running, so if I say hello, hello, how can I assist you today with a smiley face? And there's some other things here, so if you want to stop Alarma, disable it and remove it, but also if you want to remove any of these models, you can. So I'll put all of this in the description. And I was using Conkey, uh, which was from PyApps. So to install PyApps, just click on PyApps, install now, and then we just need this, and paste that in. And once that's finished, you've got PyApps on your desktop, just double click it. And I just did a search for monitor, although I've used Conkey in lots of videos in the past. So Conkey comes up, I was also using System Monitoring Center. I'm not sure if I showed that in this video, but that's quite cool as well. So just click on Conkey and hit Install. And that's done. So let's close that down. And if I press the Windows key and start typing Conkey, you can see it comes up and then you have your System Monitor. I'm not sure why it's turned up there. Uh, it was here on the other one. Anyway, so interested to know what you're using these large language models for. And if you're using a free or a paid for version, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.